doctor do to you? <laughs> um, nothing, nothing, nothing. Just, you know, friendly uh, competition, that's all. Nothing, nothing there. I mean, have you, do you do that a lot? Because there's a lot of talk going on. Is that, uh, um, I mean, no, no, nah, it's just, yeah, like, I'm not no, I, I ain't gonna say it, but, oh well, yeah, like, I'm, I'm always, I'm always, like, in whatever bet, I'm always take myself, you know, bet on yourself, like Freddie said. Um, so, yeah, if, if, you know, yeah. You started? Hey, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to say this, like, it is what it is, you know, like, I'm, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to compete to the highest level, and um, no matter what, like, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to, gonna you know, go out for my respect, like, that's it, like, you know, I put the work in, and, um, and, and yeah, I'm never going to back down from anybody. When they're playing off of you and going on their own screens early in the game and you take those shots and hit those shots as you were, how does the defense sort of adjust to that? And how did you... I mean, I hope I hope it makes them, you know, guard me a little bit more. Um, again, like I, I don't think it, it really matters, like you know, what they do. Like at the end of the day, like I just got to continue to um, get to do what I do, and 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 even if they go in there, I can still, you know, find ways to attack the defense and and do, and do um, what, what I need to do. So um, just understand the balance between um, taking those threes and 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 also making plays, because at the end of the day, I feel like. Under, over, like, I still got that advantage, like, that's all, so. And the second half, you really become a playmaker there. Is that more you reading the defense and how they're playing you, or seeing a guy like Gary who's red hot at that right. point and sort of... Um, I think it's, it's, it's kind of both. I think it's just reading the defense, making plays, like, um... I think just just understanding the game a little bit more, being out there and, and seeing the passes a little bit more. Um, and, and I think that's not a challenge, but just, like, um, as I continue to grow, just understanding, like uh, finding my spots, understanding sometimes um, when to, you know, just just give someone a good look, just to make themselves feel good, and or like get them going, or, or whatever the case might be, or or you know just keep the defense honest. Like I think that's it's just it's just a combination of all of those things that I try to do, manipulate the game, you know, as I go, um, and and just continue to evolve. It's nice to kind of have a, a game like that against Philly. Right. Um, yeah, no, I did. we have we have a tough schedule, you know, coming up. So every every one of those games is super important, and, and playing against great teams like is always good. And, and again, having history always helps. So um, and, and I think that our focus now is turning to game two. Um, and 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 I think that just having those games like where you have two games in a row just gives you that playoff feel anyway. So um, it's it's great. It's great for us. I think it's it's gonna it's good for us as a team um, to just see where we at. And seeing the things that we can get better at, and because at the end of the day, like that's our goal anyway, right? Like, um, just just continue to build until um, we, we get to, we get to, to have a, a position to play in the playoffs. It's still so early, obviously. But did, it, did this feel like the most complete game you guys have played so far? In that, like, there, there wasn't a, the need for a fourth quarter comeback. You guys right. were sort of in control. From the start. Uh, I mean, I think we, we made shots. I don't know how many threes we made, but. Yeah, I mean, that's probably the most we made, you know, all season, right? So um, it always helps to have that. But I think just understanding the game plan, I think, um, and Beep still, you know, scored, uh, I don't know how many points, but 31, yeah. Um, he, was probably, he was probably one of the focus of the defense. So um, we, we got to get better at that there. Um, but I think we made it tough. It wasn't just super easy. It doesn't seem like we made it tough, but... Um, <laughs> We, we made him kick, kick the ball out a couple of times, and which is what we want to do. And, and, and we're going to watch the film and get better at that. But, but yeah, I think, yeah, no, we, we'll take the win. But, but, but at the same time, like, we're not satisfied. Like, we know that a team like that, they're going to come back next game and, and, and you know, they're going to make adjustments. And um, we got to be ready for that. So um, that's, that's kind of like we turn our focus to the next game. You're often the guy with the ball in your hands in transition, making decisions uh, from there. What did you see tonight? Because it felt like you guys had a lot of threes in transition. Were guys just like running their lanes better and the spacing? Like, how was the spacing in transition? Well, stops helps. Like getting stops, you know, to, to get out there and and. And we got to continue to get better. Um, I think we talked every day about, you know, um, running to the, to the corners, um, somewhat running to the rim, and, and I just creating spacing. I, I think we work on that every day. Um, and, and, and I believe and I hope that we're going to continue to get better uh, with spacing because, again, like having someone like me or Scotty like coming down the lane, you know, we got to have, you know, shooters going to the corner and, and, and the, the right spacing so we can attack. So 
Um, I think, I think, yeah, we, we, we're not where we want to be, but, but we get better. Like you said, Scotty ran the break. He opened the game setting screens. He cut a lot for you in the post. He hit a three. How helpful is it to have a guy who can just do so many different micro skills on the court? Uh, yeah, I think he's, you know, again, like that's the type of player he is, and, and we're going to need him. And um, and when he's engaged and he has energy, like doing all, all the little things, like, I mean, how many assists he has, how many rebounds, like he can do it all. So I think it's just a matter of him, you know, coming with that focus and doing it. Um, and, and, and he opens things up for us, for sure. When he is cutting for you in the post, what's the balance between clogging the lane or making that little dump off for a dump? Uh, I think it's just uh, I read, like just seeing what he does. Like again, like I feel like I can always commend that that double team. So his movement is important, and and, and he got to continue to find that open open area. That's that's pretty much it. And and it's a matter of you know me finding him, or at the end of that, I feel like I can I can take that shot twenty times, you know. But um, I, when he's open, I, I try to find him. When you're out there with those bench groups, how noticeable is the difference now in, in playing personality with Chris back from where it was the first two games? Um, I think Chris brings energy. Like he brings another, you know, um, threat out there, corner shooter or, or shooter. Um, and you know, the length that we, we want and we need. And, and I think that when you know, obviously, like um, when when Chris is, is on it, like he just you know he does everything. Like he can rebound. He can you know his his length is there. He can block shots. He can you know make the shot there. Um, so I think he's he's super important for us, and, and when he's there, like it definitely shows. Uh, and I think when everyone you know plays at the level that they're supposed to play, I think with that lineup, like just understanding our spots, and and again having someone like Gary coming off screens, and 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 the other guys just playing off of that, um, me you know setting up everyone. So um, I like that. I think we just gotta um, stay focused and, and, and keep keep um, you know kind of like our focus on our roles and the things that we do well, and with our lineup, just continue to execute. Pascal, the team's three-point shooting numbers last season uh, weren't a strength, but when you look at you know Fred being hurt at the end of last season, Precious only getting going in the second half of the season from the outside, mm -hmm. um, do you guys think you have a better three-point shooting team than the numbers? I don't about that. I mean, I think we have a team that everybody does everything, so if we, if we all get better, we'll be all right. Like, I'm, I'm not really... Yeah, I'm not a statistic guy. Like, I think, I think, yeah, like we have the personnel, and I think that the team is designed to have people that do everything. So that's how I see it. Thanks, sir. Can I just ask, what did it mean to have three Cameroonian players out there at the same time? Oh man, that question again. Yeah, no, nah, it feels great, amazing. Um, oh damn. Did you said no? No, no, I said no. I said oh, it's just a repeat question, but it's oh. a post game version of the same question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now it was great. It felt good, you know. Uh, Cameroon out there at the end of the day. Come on, Joe, come on. So, come on, keep going. So, um, yeah, it's at the end, we all win because Cameroon was winning, so we, we get. Jerry, uh, Pascal came up shooting like very tight the first half, and then the second half, he, you know, he had uh, yeah, nine assists and he run the other end of the field. And how much attention is he? Sure, you know, he gets a lot of attention. They talk about him in the game plan, they prep for him, you know, you can see it. Obviously, every team we play is sending two at him, trying to get the ball out of his hands. Obviously, I'm trying to uh, make it easier for him in a sense and just be there, catch and shoot, and help him as much as I can. Gary, you've been kind of sprinting to the corners a little more in transition. It feels like you've been rewarded the last couple of games. Can, like, can you just talk about what the transition offense has looked like these last couple of games for you guys and why you've had success? Really just trying to get out as much as he can. I was asked this question last game, you know, me sprinting to the corner can help somebody get a flash cut pass. It may open a lane for somebody of me running to the corner. So just me running to the corner, you can get me a shot or I can set one of my teammates up. So really, that's just really, really it is. Is there a balance you're finding between leaking out and, you know, making sure you guys get the defensive rebound first? Because sometimes there's an issue there. So, yeah, what's that balance like right now? Most well, definitely, it's just trying. Obviously, I'm trying to give some boards as well, but I ain't do that tonight. You know, precious. You had 22 last game. Scotty, Pascal, they often are arguing, yelling, trying to get bored. So, I'm trying to get in the mix with the trees as best I can. But you know, that's it. But really, just it. Gary, when you're out there with those bench units, how noticeable is the difference in playing personality now that Chris is back compared to those first few games? Yeah, you know, it's great to have Chris back. He brings energy, he brings uh, a goofiness to him, he brings a seriousness to him, he brings a readiness to him. You know, it's great when we get everybody back. You know, when we add Otto as well, we should be even deeper, so. 
How much do you think Otto's presence will help that group? What do you think he's going to bring to, to those teams? Just leadership, you know, he's playoff basketball, he's been in championship situations before, he's game plan for a trophy, he has a trophy, so he knows a certain level and he has a certain experience that a lot of guys on his team don't have, me included, you know, so uh, he can help us in numerous ways, a lot of ways. Gary, what's the feeling like as a teammate when a guy like Pascal is playing at a level that makes opponents almost feel helpless? It makes everybody else's job easier, you know. He, like I said, he's getting a lot of attention. He put in the work. You can see it. He's showing it every game. He's showing and proving. So we're going to continue to keep steamrolling and keep rolling as much as we can. Is it a different swagger when, like, you found a night when you're going up against Harden and B, but you guys are going to have the best player on the court? We feel like we one of the best teams and we the best players anywhere we go. We feel like we can get the job done as a collective group and we feel like we put our five against anybody five, we should be good. Chris, I know you were saying that when you were out, you got a chance from the bench to watch and see where you can really make an impact on the game. Can you yeah. feel when you're in there, the tempo sort of picking up, the pace picking up? Yeah, I feel like we're playing a little bit faster. Um, obviously, I mean, I've been playing with these guys a lot, so I kind of know where they at. And it's just about filling up the bench. You know, obviously, uh, they do a lot of things on the court, and I just try to do my role and fill up whatever I have to do on the floor: defense, rebound, game flow, whatever it is. How much did uh, that final series last year, the way you have to guard Embiid and Harden when he's out there alone, teach you about defending Brown and how much effort it took? Uh, it just works on the discipline, honestly. Um, we got a lot of schemes and it switches in every position, so it just shows you, uh, you know, how, how disciplined you gotta be. And sometimes, you know, you gotta be at the right spots and all that. And so, like, when you go in the playoffs, obviously, when you play a regular season game, it's less pressure, so it's a lot easier. This is your second game back, and you've already pulled up your own stat line pretty well. Um, how are you feeling out there? Oh, I feel good. Obviously, I've been waiting. I was uh, kind of pissed that I missed the opening season and all that, and I missed a couple. Uh, preseason game, so like it's been two years like that. So, I, you know, obviously, I wanted to have a lot of energy, and I didn't want to have a season like last year where I missed out and I came and I played like that's that's our edge, getting better at it. Precious was saying the other day how you guys sort of feed off each other, make each other better. Yeah. Do you remember how long it took last year to build that chemistry? Was that something you guys were able to pick up pretty quickly? No, I feel like we always had it. Obviously, it takes a couple of games to get it in, but you know, obviously, I always played well with Precious, and you know, he, you know, helps me. I help him, and it really, you know, it really looks good out there. So, you know, I'm trying to keep it going. Like, how you pass me the ball, how I pass you the ball, how you rebound, I rebound. It looks good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of nice to, to come up with an effort like that. I know it's not a, it's a long way from a playoff series, but last time these guys saw you in this film, it wasn't pretty. Yeah, I mean, more than anything, I was just happy with the, the focus and the effort. Um, you know, the schedule hasn't really been that great for us, so um, these are definitely tough ones, you know, after traveling and having two hard games in Miami. So um, just happy with the effort and the uh, um, focus that we showed and just being able to close it out in the fourth quarter. you gotta, you got to take them in stride. I know we all uh, – a little spoiled around here. We've had some great teams over the years, but um, you can't really take these wins for granted. That's a tough team that we just beat, and um, we got to do it again on Friday. When you mentioned the focus, do you see that on um, defense more than offense? No. <laughs> no, we got some work to do for sure, yeah. but um, the effort's there. Yeah. The effort's there. It's just a little lapses here and there. I mean, probably never going to play a perfect game, but um, I thought we, we executed the game plan for the most part. Um, they, they got hot late, some threes or some, some scramble situations. But um, so we did what we wanted to do defensively, um, see where we can be better going forward to Friday. But for the most part, we just got to do enough to, to get the job done. We did that tonight. As well as Pascal's been playing, do things open up even more for him and for you guys when he's taking those threes and knocking down those threes? I think it just, it just opens the floor for everybody, you know what I'm saying, especially when they're not helping off of me. There's going to be nights where you can clearly see, you know, where the key is for the other team. And, um, you know, they played them one on one a lot in the first half and, you know, he made them pay and then they started helping in the second half and Gary was able to shake free for a big third. I had a couple buckets in the fourth. So um, we're just making the right reads every time and um, just needing to continue to be aggressive and, um, you know, just keep playing through him until, you know, otherwise. How much does the presence of Chris on the floor sort of change the pace and the tempo in which you guys, and specifically that second unit, 
the hybrid units play? He just plays with a little bit more energy than the rest of us, especially at times, you know, fresh legs coming off and um, just being able to fly around, throw some corner threes in, offensive rebound. Um, just He just finds creases that, you know, a guy like him skinny enough to slip <laughs> through. So uh, just he's a, he's a great presence for us out there, and um, I think he's just finding his niche in his role, and that's a big piece for us coming off the bench. What did you make of the lineup of Coloco and Boucher playing at the same time? How effective did you find that to be as a guard? Yeah, I like it. I think anytime you know we got enough size down there in the paint, I think our defense is so you know aggressive and overextending that um, we get beat on the backside a lot. So just having guys back there to erase some of the mistakes, as long as they can key into the game plan and what we want to do, what coach is asking, I think it'll be great for us. So it's just good to try different looks. And um, again, I know we always talk about building our toolbox and having different options to go through, and, and that was one of them tonight. So I um, thought those guys did a great job. Fred, does it feel like OG's anticipation is that like the best you've seen so far? His what? His anticipation. Like on, on defense? defense? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I come to expect it. You know what <laughs> I mean? He's been so good defensively for us. I think he's just finding a better uh, pace and rhythm and um, not really going for home runs all the time, just staying solid. And when he goes, he gets them. So I think that's a that's a maturity thing, just you know, what you get from experience and just knowing when to go for the steal. But, uh, He's been an anchor for us on that end of the floor. We're going to continue to lean on him, and um, he'll be a big key for our defense. Seems like uh, Otto's getting pretty close uh, to returning. You're kind of eager to see what another uh, toy in the, under the tree might bring, or tool in the toolbox here. Yeah. <laughs> Extra, another good play. Some sort of metaphor. <laughs> another, yeah, that was bad. Yeah, HR. Another good play. I'm going to call it HR, Mark. But, uh, <laughs> He's only right. He's going to call it HR. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, this is some spacing, you know, some shooting. Uh, just having a guy out there that can uh, space the floor, um, another championship caliber player. Uh, just I think that he'll just be another group piece for us that is really going to help you know open the floor for Pascal, myself, and everybody else. So I'm excited to to see him get back. But you know it's a long season. He he take his time. We got time. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I thought I thought offensively we were we were real, you know really good tonight in a lot of a lot of areas. Right, we got transition buckets and we really moved the ball. I mean, 32 is probably indicative of how we moved the ball. I thought we had some of our best possessions were some great ball movement. We didn't end up with anything in, but I think it was um, just really making the right reads. I thought we we did a good job with our spacing. We got a few cuts in there mixed in. So um, and it was a you know, low turnover night too for most of the game, yeah. You guys did sort of play at a very, uh, very fast pace, and especially in the first half, you got out and sort of ran them a little bit. Was that sort of a plan to go after them in that, in that regard? Well, I mean, we talked a little bit about it in the. Um, Pre-game, and we've been talking about it uh, not just for tonight in general in the last week that that we're we need to try to pick up the pace a little bit when you know again if you're getting stops and you're getting turnovers you got to try to get it up the floor and to at least take a look and did a, did a good job of that tonight. Is there, other than effort, attention to detail, is there anything you can attribute uh, this improving the defensive rebounding to? The numbers from last year. I know it's early, but from last year to this year, the numbers are kind of. That's good. We needed we needed that. We needed to do better on that. Um, it's probably too early to be making any big conclusions, but hopefully we're just doing a little better job of fundamentally blocking people out and and more guys on the glass, more guys chasing down long ones. That was always, you know, part of our rebounding problems. I thought, especially in the first half of last year, the long the long ones we were we weren't really racing down very well, and we seemed to be. Doing a much better job of that for for one little extra thing there, yeah. They were playing off Pascal and going under screens. He hits those first four threes. If those jumpers are falling for him, how much does that open things up for him? Well, they beat, he went against my theory tonight. I said whenever he makes three threes, I say he scores thirty. And he made four in a row to start. He was well on his way to thirty. I think he had fifteen in the first half. But he really, again, uh, yeah. I mean, he's a good shooter. You know, I just I still say it's a matter of time before he's like that really shows in a season, right? He is a technique is great. He really works on it. He really hits a high percentage in in his workouts and things. Um, yeah, that makes it tough to takes you know um, a little bit of a 
thinking of how you're going to play him if he can if he's going to make those. But in saying that, I just again thought he just made the just about the right decision on that line, even though he missed those last I think three. Those were the shots he should have taken. You know, he had it down there deep. He had the size advantage. He got clearance, and they just didn't quite go in tonight. But he made the right decision. He came over to me and he said, "I ought to keep passing." I said, "No, you made the right move. You were one on one with size advantage." And um, so I, I'm, I'm just more impressed with that of how he's seeing the whole floor and seeing the game. He sent a lot of attention at MB uh, when he was off the floor. He sent a lot at Harden. The numbers don't look. Right, but do you think that you make them uncomfortable at least? Well, I think I think that we, whatever we were doing, right, depending on who it was, it had us active, right. I thought we really were flying around, and and um, I don't know. It seems like we didn't create a ton of turnovers, but it seemed like there was a lot of disruption anyway, and there was some big ones. There was a couple pickoffs for for dunks the other way, you know, the the ones we did create. But I thought we got our hands on the ball a lot. We um, created a lot of hang time passes, so we could rec you know continue to rotate, and we finished most of the possessions. Right, like they would make the right kick out, we'd be there. They'd make the next one, we'd be there. They'd make the next one, we'd be there, and 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 so. It, Again, you're right. The numbers maybe don't show that we gave those guys all the attention we did, but I think it had us pretty active. Nick, with OG, you know, oftentimes defensively we talk about his strength and his length. But what do you make of his ability to anticipate and make those passing lanes? Yeah, it's always been something he's kind of done since he's been here, right? And um, I think it is just a combination of anticipation and and being able to like quickly explode into the play, you know. And he does it from kind of a almost almost a decoy thing. He's just standing up straight, and all of a sudden he's just, you know he's in in the lane and he's gone. So, you know, he was <clears throat> really uh, there was a stretch where he really got his hands on a lot of balls as a secondary defender, right? Like guys dribbling in there, he would poke them away while he was just kind of hanging out a lot. Um, starting to see that appear a little bit again, like it used to kind of regularly. That's like a special thing to understand, right? Like to know what the other team's trying to do, but also like let them think that they can do it and then get in there. Yeah, a little bit. Like uh, it's. It, I mean, listen, when when you throw one away that gets picked off for a dunk. It's usually a surprise. I mean, nobody in this league's throwing throwing those passes, expecting those to get picked off, right? Can I have to go back to pace one more time? Uh, yeah. I think Boucher in the first half really changed the tempo of the game. Have you been really missing that off the bench in those first three games? You didn't play that that, that tempo. Yeah. I th yeah. I think I think it was super noticeable in the second game in Miami when he came in. Just just speed up the floor, and I think it's contagious. You know what I mean? Like when a guy whizzes by you, you almost get caught in the. The, you know, I think I think it drags other guys up the floor faster too, and and um, it's really a special skill of his, right? He's really fast, and um, he needs to you know air it out and, and do that because even if it isn't creating something for him, it's probably creating some forward momentum for the rest of our guys, a little bit increased pace with the ball, and probably some decent spacing to have some something fairly quick happen. I was super happy with the defense. Right? I thought the defense was really, really good. I know I know sometimes the numbers don't don't bear I mean, there was some stretches there. I think they kinda got them in clumps, right? Where they bang, 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 bang. But there was also a bunch of stretches where we were, you know, five, six consecutive stops in a row and really looked like we had them a little bit, um, you know, kind of getting getting done what we wanted to get done. So that was that was, I think it was a good, really good defensive effort. Looking at the, the box score, oh, sorry, looking at the box score, um, a much more even scoring game for you guys. This one, do you, do you look for that when you're facing a team like the 76ers? Well, I don't. I think we'd we'd love to draw that up every night like that, right? It doesn't happen that often, but I'd, I think it's awesome when it's what is that five guys over 15. And almost six. That's pretty good. And again, I think you can't really draw it up. That's just again a product of taking what's there. And 
and it was a little bit of everything tonight was there. So we just we just took what was there, and and a lot of guys stepped in and made shots, and and um, the combination of running a bit, cutting a bit, and spraying it out a bit was all, you know, that was a nice mixture. Two assists is uh, like that's a season high. I mean, is there a number? Double, double our season high. Yeah. <laughs> we just doubled our season high, Doug. But, but I mean, uh, from two to four. No, just kidding. <laughs> but, but I mean, do you want that number higher? Like, you know, 30 is a tough one to hit night after night. 30 is a big number yeah. in assists, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, I think even last year you guys are near the bottom yeah. quarter of the league. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's something we're trying to uh, hopefully emphasize, right? And I think that. You know, we made a good chunk of threes tonight, 16. There's probably a lot of, I don't know, maybe half of our assists came from our three kickouts. I don't think so. Pascal was dribbling on a few of those threes, wasn't he? Probably weren't. In the fourth quarter there, Fred uh, got his guy on his back and engaged the center and just waited for like two, three seconds before he hit the cutter. That, uh, that control of the full court, has he nudged that up a little bit this season? It looks like it. It looks to me like he's um, finding another play when he gets in there. Sometimes he'll sit in there and pass it. Sometimes he'll bounce it back out, right? Or sometimes he'll get off it back out and go screen again. Or you know, like I think he's found a, a, a next action, and it's several of them. Yeah.